show me that it's easier than us, okay? So let's go, let's fight, let's bring the mentality back in, and let's... My routine. Yeah. I try to do it in the morning too, but like after practice, I always have my body armor. Like That's the best one, yeah. But I like also the uh, orange clementine one. Okay. This is like a new flavor that I just discovered. It's amazing because I, I used to drink as a kid, you know, when I was younger. Uh, like it's a Polish uh, drink, it's called Timbark. And it's also like kind of like the same flavor, but Timbark has obviously a more sugar. Yeah. Then body armor and this one is the perfect replacement right now like to drink all the time. And it keeps you hydrated. I need like literally like one or two of them and I'm perfectly hydrated. If I drink water I need like six, seven bottles. And this is the beautiful suburbs here, you know, I have a lot of lakes. I'm very excited for it, like maybe there's like, I don't know, like a lake where everyone is jumping in, you know, like would be nice in the summer. Oh, finally we moved in, not living on mattresses anymore. So we got our furniture pretty much like a week ago or something like that. I was still like unpacking boxes and everything, uh, you know, organizing everything. But the only part that's negative about this suburb part is just uh, we have also coyotes in our backyard. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, and that's why we like uh, order the fence now, you know, just to keep our dog safe and also our little son a little bit safe, you know. So I recorded it even, I can show you a video about it. Just running here, crazy, eh? Used to be a city boy, I still love the city because you have a lot of options going, you know, for a coffee, you know, many restaurants to do something. But, uh, you know, I love this area here too because we have like a one main street and you literally have everything what you need. I like, I like this uh, area here a lot. Colors of the houses, I like it, you know. I like the colors. Amazon every day. This is actually also a very nice thing. So right now it's recording us, so I could say everything what I want. This is my dog already. It's like, hey baby, could you open the door? We here. Hello. Hello. Oh, there she is. Hi, welcome. Home. Welcome home. Hi, Munchkin. Good, you good boy. So we're still missing like a little dining table here, but this is our living room where we spend the most day. I'd just like to point out that this <laughs> is a reminder for him to not hit his head on it. So now this beautiful scarf not only represents the amazing team, but it's also a reminder that bruising is not fun. <laughs> can, we, can, get, can we get also the shot here? Come on, please. <laughs> not everyone is that small, you know? <laughs> Easy. Gaga just brought it uh, to me after the first home game and it's a tradition that the ultras, it's here, the fans, they always give it like to the new players who sign or like, I think also to homegrowns, I, I think so. But um, I was very sad about it because, uh, you know, after the first home game, I remember we went to the fans, obviously the first uh, home open and everything. I was so happy about it. But I think I missed just, you know, like the two guys who like always giving this to the new players. And then Gaga came into me, he's like, bro, this is from the Ultras here for you. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Hey, it's nice to have it and now now obviously we'll uh, find a place too but right now this is the perfect place because i don't want to head there anymore <laughs> first of all a lot of credit a lot of credit 99 percent did my wife she did really everything she packed everything in philly and to us it was the most important thing to find a house as soon as possible and yeah. as quick as possible yeah. it's very lucky with this one here but until we could move in, uh, you know, she still stayed in Philly yeah. with our little one. I was in preseason anyway, so I was tired of being in a hotel. Um, so having this here is already like a very big comfort, <laughs> a couch, because we've been here living here yeah. what, pretty much for five days, like just on the ground with mattresses. Yeah. <laughs> Since we started dating, I knew it was like a possibility of always just packing up and moving. We yeah. actually found out about Chicago when we were on a family vacation in Jamaica. Yeah. And it's like you always hear about going somewhere else or maybe being sold and literally within not even a week it was like all kind of official and then yeah he made up his way to preseason and i was behind 
with the kiddos. Everything went... <laughs> one napping upstairs. Yeah, now. a move is always like a lot. When you have kids and think about putting them in daycare or school or having your, your dog have a backyard or somewhere grass, it's it's a different thought process. Like any, if it was yeah. just us, again, apartment, who would care about buying a house and doing all this stuff? It was stressful, but uh, everything was worth it because right now we have a beautiful house and uh, we feel very, very comfortable here. We love Chicago. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go, <laughs> go for a walk? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go for a walk, eh? <laughs> right when the pandemic hit, it was like a rough time because I wanted to play, I wanted to do practice, but they said we can't just go back to training right now, not even individual training. And I was like, hey, um, I always wanted to have a dog. And then we got him and that was perfect time because, uh, you know, it's kind of like having a baby, you know, you have to wake up every four hours, you know, to potty train him. Right when the pandemic hit, it's like a very rough time for everybody. But, you know, we had him, so he was our, like, you know, sunshine during this time. So a lot of things, you know, still to organize, but it's just about like organizing things so we can make some space for the cars. You know, day by day, looking how I feel, especially like now, uh, three days before the game, I'm kind of like leaving this. And then when I feel, you know, good to have a little bit more power, then I just kind of like will organize that, yeah. When you arrive to a new club or you sign a new contract, uh, we always have like a team uh, evening, like especially after dinner, where you have to introduce yourself, talk about you, what you can bring into the team, and then you have to sing in front of the team. That's a tradition that they usually do everywhere. Um, and they ask me like, what's special about you? What's like something interesting about you? And uh, I'm a v very, very big Harry Potter fan. So I bought a Harry Potter castle, the Lego one. Just need to find the right place for it, you know? This is my Harry Potter castle, the Lego one. And I still have Hedwig in this one here. Hedwig the owl. There she is. I'll show you a little bit of the basement. That was my first goal when I scored in the MLS. There was the supporter shield winner ball that we got and also the supporter shield winner of the jersey yeah this season um, we're gonna make the playoffs i'm pretty sure about that so i'm um, looking to achieve the same things that i achieved in philly and uh, even better you know it would be nice bestie do you know where my golden boot is oh here it is There it is. Gotta do one of those like... <laughs> <laughs> Every individual award comes with, you know, with the effort of the team. So I'm really proud and like very proud like what uh, I accomplished with Fidi for the past three years. But that's something I'm looking forward to accomplish with the team here, Chicago. Hopefully more, hopefully really more. Let's go, this is my favorite part. After a nap, daddy can wake him up. Hello. This is the signal for like, I want that, I want that, give me that. You know that's a good nap. Look at his cheek, his head all red. My boys. You know, adapting to the team, that was the easiest of everything because we have just such a great atmosphere, but we have also a lot of great individuals. I remember in preseason, the first time I just arrived, even with you and with everyone, every staff, like everyone around, they welcomed me so nice, so it was easy to adjust. We're playing such a good season. It's season, we're just talking about the first three games, but like very, very excited and looking forward like to the next games, especially now home game again. Because yeah. it's, it's also a very beautiful stadium. It was great atmosphere in the uh, first game. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited. But And must I say, FaceTimes have been cut ever since he came to Chicago. Because it's always like, baby, but the boys want to play cards. Baby, I'm going <laughs> to go get some food. We're, we're going to do uh, this. Yeah, I, I know, before, I know. it would always be like, got to FaceTime my wife. Like, really I like, think he loves it here. <laughs> yeah, it's a great atmosphere. I really like it, yeah.
Ok, bye. So obviously after the first win against DC the previous week, you know, the fire had almost ticked off every single box to start the season. They hadn't conceded a goal yet. They were unbeaten. They got a road win. Now the final step was to get a win at Soldier Field. Come on, boys. The pitch is nice and smooth and fast. Let's go. Super importante encontrar nuestro primer partido con los tres puntos y fue un envío anímico muy importante para nosotros. Lo necesitábamos. Same mentality as always, and uh, it's the best part is always before the game. Rafa is always holding his speech. No one gives a shit about last week. Today is important, and only today. And guys, I want the record and I want the clean sheet again. Come on, come on! 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 There were two players that the Fire had brought in, obviously Jordan Shakiri and Kasper Shabilko, for almost the sole purpose of scoring goals, specifically if you're talking about Shabilko. So if the Fire could find a way to get Shakiri and Shabilko both to find the back of the net, I think that that was probably going to be the biggest win of the day for the Fire in addition to three points. When Shakiri drops into these deeper positions, which he's been doing a lot lately, he always picks his head up and is looking for that big run to be made from either winger, especially when Shabilko's checking in. And on this occasion, it happened to be Fabian Herbers, and it almost looked like a picture-perfect ball from Shakiri. It looked to be the just perfect amount of weight, but it was right out of the reach of Fabian Herbers. But it would have been a sensational first goal for the fire at Soldier. More than maybe we've seen today, but he wanted it with balance. Herbers. Now it's Shabilko. So early on, Casper Shabilko finds a ball from Fabian Herbers after the fire turnover sporting Kansas City in their own defensive third, which had happened a number of times. And Casper Shabilko, who really didn't have too much delivery over the first three weeks of the season or so, really was just sort of shooting first and asking questions later. Usually I just always do like a cutback or like, you know, try to put the ball like to my right foot. And this time I was thinking like, no, just prepare the ball as good as you can and just finish it off with the left. Casper Shabilko scores the first goal at Soldier Field in 2022. And he gets himself off the side as well. Chicago leads it 1 to 0 right before the half hour mark. I mean, I know it's still early, but Ezra Hendrickson continues to talk about it. We continue to talk about it. This team has a different feel about it. There's, there's an aggression, there's a willingness to tackle, there's a willingness to cover ground, and we saw it against DC in frigid temperatures. And then to see it again followed up after a big three points on the road at home, it was just so encouraging because it really doesn't matter the condition, it doesn't matter whether they're home or away. This group is going to fight and they're going to be impossible to break down for 90 minutes. Turbers, heavy first touch. Pineda, was he taken out in the penalty area? Yes! And the Fire, for the moment, are awarded their first penalty in over a year. The Fire continued to put pressure on Sporting Kansas City, and Mauricio Pineda actually found himself inside of the penalty area. And the defender stuck out his foot, and in real time, it looked like a foul. But with VAR, you had another look. And, and actually, from our vantage point, it did look a little bit soft. But again, the Fire will take these breaks any way that they come. And then once it gets to that point, and the Fire actually have a penalty, there was only one man on the field who was going to take it. All eyes on Jordan Shakiri, 12 yards away from the penalty spot, and you couldn't have asked for a better moment for Shakiri to have the opportunity to score his first goal in front of the home crowd facing the South End at Soldier Field. Credit to Peter Vermees' side, they fought and they ended up stringing together a number of really sharp passes and the fire switched off for just a moment. Espinosa, their captain on the night, ends up slotting at home, but you really didn't feel a wrestle of momentum. It was just sort of, you know, the breaking of the shutout streak for the fire, which ended at north of 300 minutes and simply just sort of a consolation prize for Sporting Kansas City. It ended the shutout streak, obviously, but it was never going to deter the fire from getting their first three points at home on the night. 
So final 10 minutes, homegrown product, Brian Gutierrez comes on to the field. Then it's always electric when Guti comes on because he's an attacking player, he's exciting, he likes to drive in back lines, and immediately he gets on a ball pretty quickly. And a lot of open space, Remy Voltaire, who actually just given the ball away, comes at him at 110 miles per hour. Guti does a little flyby, a little shimmy, and he has about four different options in the penalty area and ends up picking out Kasper Shabilko. For the fire. Gutierrez, Shabilko! That'll do it! Casper Shabilko with a brace! And the fire have a two goal lead with just a few minutes remaining! And at that point, it was it lights out and it sealed the three points. And that's gonna do it full time! Back to back wins for Ezra Hendrickson and the Chicago Fire. They put three past four in Kansas City. They say! Unfortunately, no clean sheet, but another win, another victory, that's the most important. Vamos! Perfect, man, perfect day for the Fire fans. Thank you. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Mentalmente, estamos fuertes, seguiremos trabajando de esa manera, de serlo más positivo posible dentro de, dentro de la semana para entrenar. Pero bueno, falta mucho, recién empieza. Necesitamos seguir creciendo todavía. So three points for the fire, three goals. Yes, the shutout streak did come to an end, but an almost near perfect finish in terms of Shakiri on the score sheet, Shabilko on the score sheet, and really just putting on a show for the home fans. And I think if you asked any Fire fan heading into the first international break, if they were going to have eight points out of the first four games, every single one of them is signing the dotted line. And it's really a tremendous start for Ezra Hendrickson and his crew. I'm the head athletic trainer here with the Chicago Fire, and I help players with their day-to-day -day issues. Everything from prepping to training, to when they have injuries, to prevention, to if they need doctor's appointments or issues here and there, and, and things like that, their general health care as a whole. Oh, we're doing both. Oh, it's a video. <laughs> what do you do Who's your favorite person to treat? Uh, you know I'm not gonna answer oh, that. Yeah. Favorite person to treat. You're not getting good content here, sorry. <laughs> I'm an assistant athletic trainer here. My main job obviously is just to assist Hillary and make sure that all the players' needs are attended to and so that they're ready to perform on the field at the highest level. <laughs> I'm the massage therapist, so I help out in getting the guys ready for day-to-day -day training, game day readiness, as well as just total recovery, anything body-related. I'm kind of the guy that uh, helps put it all back together. I am Fran. I am the legend of Chicago. I am play with Peter Barderama. You know? <laughs> Whatever Carlos Very says, easy. I agree. Hey, Whatever hey, Carlos hey, says, I agree. Cool USA. I, I play the World Cool USA. <laughs> For myself, the biggest thing is just individual player care. One, prevention, and two, dealing with each individual as they are. We believe that laughter is the best medicine. We want a positive atmosphere and like to banter and like to, you know, have jokes and, and everybody come with just kind of a light attitude. It can be really stressful in this environment and the treatment room is a safe space. It's there for you when you're hurting, it's there for when you feel good, and it's just a place for that good positive energy. We're really good about that and you just care about the individual, it makes a big difference. When they feel like they're not just, you know, another player or just someone on a roster, that's super important that they feel like they're seen and heard and that their issues are, are their own and you're, you're dealing with those specifically tailored to them. <laughs> Athletes are constantly breaking their bodies down and the recovery process has evolved to a point where you know you can't just do it on your on your own. You need somebody to help kind of kickstart that recovery process. So by being able to introduce massage therapy into this, we're able to accelerate guys' recovery from injuries, physical demands, or sometimes it can be like the mental demands too, just getting to chill out, being able to give them the mental break just to kind of shut down for a little while is a pretty key component as well. 
I don't know if you guys met my assistant, Jonathan Bornstein. You know, I try and help out where we can. Assistant to the massage therapist. You guys say something? <laughs> <laughs> Not even plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> it could be a lot of fun, but it's it's definitely a lot of hard work. Just have that balance of a lot of time, but it's worth it when you know things go well. You see guys get injured and come back and have success. That's why we do it is to to help them and see them reach their goals, and those are ultimately become our goals as well. Not the best in the game. Right here, you're looking at. <laughs> Ah uh, man, working with Hillary has been awesome. I mean, this is my third or fourth season, I believe, with her. She's awesome at what she does. She knows her role and our roles front and back. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, not everybody gets it. You know, it's obviously been a lot of hard work. I've given everything that I have to, to be the best athletic trainer I can be, and they have given me the opportunities as they've come to progress and, you know, have that chance to, to be here and be advance and be promoted as a female in a male dominant space. It's a step for everybody to kind of see that it is something that works. You know, a lot of people can think that it might be scary or it might um, be a bad situation, but it uh, it definitely is something that is, that is possible. And you know, you have to work hard and you have to be good at your job and you also need the opportunities. So you do have your challenges and I've been very fortunate to have a lot of really good guys, really good players throughout my career that, that have supported me and they support me in the role and that that's huge when you have the backing of your players and there's an element of them protecting you and and making sure that you're okay and thankfully like I said I haven't had any any issues from that side and it's just about being of that personal connection of, of just getting to know people and working working together and seeing the common goal um, is the biggest thing. Oh, you just were waiting. I didn't know this was <laughs> you happening were but just, I love that you it were is. just waiting. Please, Doctor. for everyone that cannot see, Aiden <laughs> Brown. Oh, I dear. Know. <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> uh, and people like that, yeah. You you get a lot of people who just, they, they're they good human beings and it makes it a lot easier. You know, you can be in bad situations, but um, yeah, when you have people around you who are your champion you a little bit, it, it definitely helps. I've had a lot of support throughout the years, so it's been good. Hillary's big time. Hillary's no, Aiden is big time. He's, he's, see, look, camera's on you. Hillary's You're next. Getting, Hillary's getting a whole episode. A oh, wait, is that what it is? I don't know. Yeah, Jeff DeGroote, part of the, part of the team there. <laughs> Jeff is next. No way. Yeah. Videography no, see, department. This is, this is who you really need to focus on. This is yeah, the exactly. most important nah, nah, nah. one. Yeah. Got Turn it back around. <laughs> don't, don't you say that. <laughs> Thank you, Gaga. See you in the Always morning. Gaga. <laughs> Oz Oz is a character. He's he's a character. He's a good guy. Cool. cool. Thank you guys. Thanks, <laughs>